Hello and welcome everybody to another edition of What Happens on Tour. Today I am joined by two members of the 1986 Kangaroos touring team to Great Britain and France, Stephen Blocker Roach. James, good to be here. Excited to talk everything Ooh, that happened on tour. There's and, a lot uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and you as well, Peter Sterling. Hello, Welcome. Jimmy. Mate, th this light's not great for you. You look paler than, I, than <laughs> even last time I saw you. Well, mate, you know, we are trying to focus on the tour, <laughs> but I just have come back off holiday as well. So this is me uh, looking tanned, oh, actually, okay. Sterling. Oh, so, right, um, yes. 50, 50 yeah. plus, James? Or? Oh, 100. Yeah. Mate, there's, yeah. there's no other. There's, there's no other. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so Blocky, you're saying that there's a lot you can't. Tell us about the tour. Three three months three of months touring, of like, bliss. Of bliss. Of bliss. You were basically on your holidays, weren't you? I was. Well, I got injured during the tour, so but I stayed on. A lot of people uh, went home. <laughs> and they did a social director. Oh, yeah, it's very good. I've become a social director. Yeah. yeah it was good. Great. Uh, mate, great memories. Um, the the blokes who were playing the day, I feel a little bit sorry for them because of the kangaroo tours. We are... Uh, We'd go away, as you mentioned, for three months, but we'd play we'd play Wigan and St Helens and Warrington and all those sort of clubs, and it was uh, it was unbelievable. I had my my great mate Les Hobbs gave me this like furry sort of coat, nice warm coat. Anyway, uh, when I was uh, when I wasn't playing, I used to hire it out for forty quid, <laughs> and there was a lineup there was a lineup there to wear that coat. Oh, you get sure his people into it. Back then, like I think you know, to win a grand for playing a grand final, win a grand final, ab absolutely the ultimate. But so to a kangaroo tour, I, I really feel for the players today that they don't get to experience that three months away playing against English club sides. Now to play for your country still to me, is the, the greatest honour you can have. But it's a next level to go on a tour, a kangaroo tour, uh, away with like, 27 other great blokes playing once a week, getting to experience a whole new um, you know, environment. Uh, north of England, fantastic. Love their rugby league up there. And I, I agree with Blocker. Like, it was just... I was fortunate to go on two and they were just the best time of my life. Yeah, I guess for, you know, the modern day fan, the, the, the younger fan of our sport, they probably don't realise just that this was the pinnacle. Origin seems to have, mm. have overtaken the, the international game and there's, there's reasons behind that. But, but back in 1986, there was no... Better honour than putting but, on that green that that green blazer with the mm. kangaroo badge and the and the green tie, right? And especially what had come before, you know, you have a look at the touring sides leading up to '86. You know, going back, like I'm sure Blocker was the same. You know, getting up in the morning to watch the the, the games um, on, on television, the test matches. But to me, I, I loved the the club games, you know, almost as much to go to places, you know, up in Cumbria like Whitehaven and and Barrow and um, just the, the scenery around the place and the history up there. And, you know, we're at Oddsall Stadium in Bradford there. You couldn't see the game because the mist <laughs> the fog. would come in. And, you know, <laughs> like was, yeah. all these different experiences, you know. Yeah, I've got a good one about that too, James. We, uh, we used to have um, uh, duty boys and the duty boys, the two duty boys had to give the boys – Whatever they wanted, you know, if they wanted a coffee, I'd have to go and make Within it for reason, them. Within reason, Stephen. We, well, oh, yeah. we, we're talking. Are we, <laughs> we're not on tour. But Hang on, duty boys. Part, nothing nothing. like this are two of the players. Two yeah, the players. Yeah, yeah. So it's me and Greg Dowling, right? So Otstall Stadium, we're talking about. You couldn't see in front of you, mate. It was mate. It was an amazing day. Anyway, we had to bring the towels and the razors and the soap and the shampoo and all that sort of stuff. So we get there and they played in the mud. I didn't play that day. I, didn't, no, I don't I didn't think you played that day. Anyway, we played. They played in the mud and all that sort of stuff and. Um, I said to Greg, where's the, where's the towels? I didn't bring them. Where's the razors? They had one job. Mate, they had one job. That, <laughs> mate, we had to run the baths and all that for them and, you know, like yeah, give oh, them the towels. Oh, they've got those old school. Yeah, like, old school baths. I remember. I can remember James, playing there. No razors, no soap, no shampoo, no, what, the ones, the backs outside, backs that wore the aftershave and all that yeah. sort of crap. <laughs> so we went, to, I'll never forget it, we went to, a, after the game, we used to go back and we went to this nightclub called Cloud Nine. I don't know if you ever remember it. Anyway, the other part of the touring team said, you two have got to stay on the bus. You're not allowed to come into the nightclub. If you just come in, we're going to bash you for, for, yeah, for forgetting all the stuff. So him and I, we just sat in the back of the bus on our own. We weren't allowed to have a beer or anything. Right. And That's a true just, story. And you just stayed on there. Well, we're, mate, there's 28 of them going to bash us. <laughs> what are you going to do? Surely they wouldn't have. 
<laughs> I think they would have. Mate, oh, there's, mate, there's more than Cloud Nine in Bradford. Oh, they go they, to a, sneak well, off to another pub. Yeah. Mate, they, someone <laughs> would have told on us. <laughs> they, the, the duty board, like it sounds funny, and it's a really important part of it, you know, because you get 28 <laughs> blokes going away and eventually um, you, you sort of have a, a group of that who will be in the test side and, and, and players who won't type thing. So nobody could ever be treated any differently, and that was the important thing. And that's what certainly under Frank Stant and, and then under Donny Ferner, Donny Ferner mm. um, you know, they were very, very strong on making sure that there was great camaraderie in the team and and that you weren't sort of split, you know, New South Wales, Queensland, along those lines or, or any lines whatsoever. So that was part – if you weren't playing, you had a turn as being a duty boy. And, and as Blocker says, it was everything. You know, electrical tape for the players to make sure you cleaned the shed after the game and all those kind of things, you know. And it just kept a real togetherness mm. that was so important because you don't have success unless everybody is, is, is happy is and content. In, yeah. Even if they're not playing in the biggest games of the tour, you know, they still had to feel a real part of it and everybody did. Apart from – Except for me and Greg Dowling. <laughs> I mean, mate, they should have done it a little bit better. Fancy putting two front rows together to remember stuff. Wow. Well, <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, they, they really shouldn't half, complain. Yeah, give yeah. me a half or yeah. something. Mate, just, just on Greg Dowling. Again, you know, uh, the familiarity within the group is so important type thing. And and I'd, I'd not most of the guys had a really good affiliation with the, the Balmain boys and that. Didn't know a few of the Queenslanders as well. And nicknames are something that, again, you know, it's familiar, so you, you get to learn those type things. You, you had the obvious ones, Terry Lamb was Barr and Craig Alexander was Brandy. Um, the one that I really enjoyed, Les, Les Kiss was a winger, a Queensland winger, played at, at North Sydney. And he used to ha- he used to blink a lot, like two or three times more than any. I don't know if it was because it was a nervous tickle him, but his nickname was... Lighthouse, <laughs> which, which tickled my fancy. <laughs> the thing that didn't tickle was I didn't know Greg Dowling, front row from Queensland. So I, I had a chat with Wally and Gino, who are, Gene Miles and Wally Lewis, who I you know, knew f- pretty well from playing rep footy but, and touring with them. And I said, what about this Greg Dowling? And they said, oh, mate, the most amiable bloke, you know, gentle bloke you've ever met, you know, even for a front row type thing. And he said, look, he doesn't want to be called Greg. He, he prefers something more personal. So you can either call him Dishhead or Fuzzy Bear. And me being gullible and a, a goose. <laughs> oh, no, no. My first Mate, conversation was... <laughs> with him, I've started with, hey, Fuzzy Bear. Yeah. <laughs> he bit me on the on the <gasps> foot forehead. Yeah, really? I reckon you yeah. can still see the indentation yeah. now, mate. It. It, oh, yeah, it was... You <laughs> just took the beat, hook, line and sinker. And sat on the bus for the next week, didn't say boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boo. He bit me on the forehead and left teeth marks that you could see for that next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you didn't do that again. <laughs> no, 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 I learnt very, very quickly. Not the most yeah. amiable bloke I'd ever yeah, met. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Juno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Cheers for steering me that into, into that. Um, I guess b- before getting to the 86 um, uh, touring team, did you feel a, a sense of pressure based off what had been achieved in 1982 with the Invincibles? Like Stella, you were a part of that team. Definitely, uh, only five survivors, I guess, yeah. if that's the, the the correct term. But you, you know, you've gone, you you're following in the footsteps of uh, of something that I don't believe has ever been done before. No, I, I, there was definite pressure there, you know, and and it wasn't something that was spoken about. It was just that um, I guess whenever there was any press about this '86 side, the '82 team got mentioned, um, and trying to emulate what mm. what they had done. Um, you know, we didn't quite know what was in store for us. And we'll get into it, but the 86 opposition was better than the 82 opposition. Uh, some of the players that we'll speak about on the English side, um, you know, I think the first game on tour in 86... We played it, Wigan. Wigan. It was only about eight or ten points difference, yeah. you know, and that was a sort of a sign that... Remember, Pete, they tried to get us. We arrived on a Thursday and we played Wigan at Wigan on the Saturday. I'll never ever forget the crowd. Like this was a thirty thousand people mate, at Central Park, yeah, right? It was un- mate, it was un- we couldn't believe it. No. And you know, they obviously uh, Wigan at that time were the best team in the in the English league, and uh, we played them two days after we got the plane. We we led pretty well uh, up to about sixty minutes. Is that right, Pete? Yeah, I, I, think so. I remember, yeah. and um, you know, I think 
fatigue might have set in a little bit, but um, we ended up beating them. But the crowds, the crowds at the at the club games were, were the same sort of as a test because, as you know, the grounds over there they're right on you. So, mate, it was it was unbelievable, and every game was the same everywhere we went. Um, the, the crowds were there, and I, I think I guess the pressure actually grew a little bit as the t- the more games you won, the yeah, more you, it became a realistic thing yeah. that maybe this can be achieved type thing. So there was pressure at the beginning, and it probably got uh, more and more. Uh, the, and again, we get through to it, but the third test, like they they came at us hard in that second half, and it was in balance, you know. And mm. so in the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, you can't blow this now type thing. So mm. yeah, I, I think. It wasn't a millstone around our neck, but it was certainly, yeah, there was pressure there from day one, I now, thought. Pete, you talk about great players. They were all great players on that tour, but, you know, you're talking about the pressure of the third test. Wally Lewis, he just went, remember, remember yeah. he scored the, the match-winning try? Yeah. He just went, well, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. That, that was a, the type of player that we, we had in that side. The uh, the back line, the back line, Sterling, Lewis, Gene Miles, right, Brett Kenny. Um, Rowdy, Rowdy Shearer, Michael O'Connor, Gary Jack. Mate, I can remember, this is honest, mate, I can remember standing on the halfway line watching how good these blokes are. Mm. Mate, they were, mate, every single one of them had this unbelievable skill to do something with the ball. And, mate, we, mate, we, we play in the front row. We hardly had to do anything, <laughs> really. No, truly. Mate, they were that yeah. good. They were that good. We played against Leeds one day and uh, Kelvin Skerritt's uncle, he's about 42. I forget what his first name was. Anyway... We beat them, I remember, Pete. Uh, we beat them at, at their home ground at Leeds, 48 nil. And he came out in the paper the next day and said they're not that good. <laughs> it was 48 nil. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I remember all those sort of things, but, I, mate, the, the thing that I could remember the most was how skillful these blokes were. Mm. Uh, second test second tests against England in that series, um, I think Australia led 26 nil at half time or something. Gene Miles had set up two and scored one. Do you remember that, Pete? Yeah, I think and the got, crowd. I think, well, I think there was fifty-two thousand people there. <clears throat> we're all singing. If you want your money back, clap your hands. The whole crowd. And Gene Miles that day was unstoppable, mate. Yeah. He was, mate, because he he was, mate. He'd be six foot three, six foot four, something like that. But he had this unbelievable skill of being able to offload over the top like a basketball player. And mate, he was him and Brett Kenny together. They were, <laughs> mate, they were unbelievable. Just on Wally Lewis. Wally obviously had. Uh, he didn't have the tour in '82 that. I think everybody expected, including himself. I think he had a point to prove in 86. He was the, the skipper. Wally was a narc, like he wasn't. But that was, you know, we didn't know of the the undiagnosed medical problem mm. that he had at the time. And it, we didn't understand that he was kind of on edge and, and that just because of that, you know, and um, that kind of came out in his personality. But you saw the greatness of his leadership in 86. Wow. Well, yeah. and, and when... Something needed to be done. He was invariably, as he'd done, you know, at origin level, you know, every time he went, put on a Moreau jersey, he, it was his show. Hmm. You know, he just found something, Pete, didn't he? Yeah. He was one of those guys that could just, I don't know, just. Unbelievable presence. Hmm. Yeah. And, um, and that, that, that really came to the fore. I'm playing inside him. I, I had the easiest job in the world. Blocker, he, he doesn't give enough credit to the forwards. Like the one thing about playing over in England, there was a true softening up period. Like the English players that we played against, they, they may not have been um, over 80 minutes as as skillful as what they were coming up against. But the one thing that we never doubted was their toughness. Like they were they were hard men. Hmm. And I've always associated, apart from yourself, James, um, as English forwards, as being, you know, these hard, hard men. You know, you, I see the more feminine side of you coming out. <laughs> in the soft, the soft but, side, good on you. But, you know, like 48 nil against Leeds, I still know that for an hour or two after the game, on you, you're under, you're in ice packs because mm. physically they were hard. Mm. And the, the forwards, there was at the first 20 minutes, didn't play much part. I stayed out of the way because that was... Yeah, you know, blocker yeah. and the five metre rule too, Pete. You know, doesn't give himself enough credit because uh, it was, that's it was it was hard in those first twenty minutes, and, and that allowed the back line then to come in to their own. My job, like I've got those places mentioned outside me, my job was to count numbers and to make sure they got it when they wanted. You know, it wasn't what am I going to if I've got Lewis, Miles, mm. Kenny on the outside of me, you get it mm. to them when they wanted it. Yeah. Early ball, Pete. And, that, and, 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 and that's right, you know. And, and so 
again, my my role as as the number seven, as the link between the two, was to wait until this softening period is taken care of, and then when there's a bit more space and a bit mm. more freedom, then give it to the guys who are going to take advantage. James, can I just mention? And uh, Pete will back me up here. I'm 100 percent sure. Like uh, Donny Ferner was the catch, right? He had played for Australia himself. Yeah, he was a wonderful in the player. Early, wonderful player. To his credit, I can still remember him saying, look, I'll, I'll just make sure you blokes are happy off the field and all that sort of stuff. He said, when you got Sterling and Lewis running the show, no, I'm, I, this has been serious, Pete. That's what he said. He said, mate, yeah, you no, got yeah. these guys running the show. I'll just make sure that you blokes are happy off the field and we, we train hard and we prepare properly. But when it comes down to reading numbers on the game and what you know, what, how we're going to play and all that, those guys yeah. run the show. But, but you know, uh, ego gets in the way of a lot of people. You know what I mean? But it didn't with Donnie. He just said, mate, these guys, yeah. th- they'll, run the, they'll run the whole party. And Don- they did. Donnie was sort of seen as more mellow than Frank Stanton had been four years previous. Don gave us a lot of freedom both on and off the field. But there was an, a hard edge to him as well. You know, if, mm. the, if the group needed to be pulled into line, there no dramas with that. Mm. And if he wasn't happy with, you know, some of the stuff that was going on on the paddock, he'd pull that in line as well. So he had a great – he had a real balance – um, because and a feel for people, Pete, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, and, and he, he understood the game and he had 28 great players there and as Stephen points out, you know, it, it, he just gave us a simple game plan and, and basically allowed, you know, sort of everybody just to do what they did best. Well, it, it's almost look, looking at the team on paper or the squad on paper and, and seeing some of the selections, especially for the first test, it's an embarrassment of riches. You've got Mal Meninga a future immortal at the age of 26, sitting on the bench mm. for the first two tests, gets a start in the back row for the third test. I think that says it all really about the quality of player that you, yeah. the Australian 86 team, had at your disposal. Hmm. Well, I, I think it just goes down to personal preference really, you know, when they're picking the side. Was, I don't, was Donnie, is he the only selector on that tour? I, I think it, I don't even know if we had selectors. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. But the, they went well, and I, I suppose those guys, those guys in the centres, which was Mal's position, probably played better than him in the earlier games. I don't. I'm not, I can't remember whether they did or they didn't. But there would be a reason why um, they they picked those two guys. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of putting that into modern day context with you, you know the 24 hour news cycle. You know whether something's happening in England, Las Vegas, France, mm. Australia, it, it's, it's going to be headlines yeah. and it's going to get to the group and back and there's going to be people asking plenty of questions, lots of comments. Everyone's going to have an opinion on it. What was it like back then? And and I'm assuming Mal, well, because I've seen the games that he played in 82 and he was an absolute fire on that Kangaroos tour mm-hmm. back in 1982. Four years later, he finds himself on, on the interchange bench. Was it a, was it an issue? Was it brought no, up? Not an issue at all. No, and and everybody, you know, Mel took it in good grace and you know put his head down and trained harder and say as you say got to start out of position in in the third test. I think you know the relationship with the the media was probably a little bit different back then as well. In fact, a, a lot of the media guys they didn't travel with the touring party, but they were sort of always not too far away and staying in, you know, if we were staying, going away, staying somewhere, they were not too far away from that as well. And so there was a real kind of trust relationship there. Um, and I suppose the tyranny of distance over there, you know, new cycle, very different. We're not seeing any of yeah, that. You wouldn't hear much at all. Okay, but, yeah, um, from here. So, it, 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 yeah, yeah there, there might have been some headlines around it, but it, it, I don't think it would have there'd be much more conversation and opinion about it now than there was back then. And it, uh, eventually, results speak for themselves. So, um, yeah, both Don Ferner and Frank Stanton, I think, would would feel as though they were well justified with some of the selection bombshells that they both came up with. Yeah, I, I guess, you, you know, you look at the, the, the modern day selections and it, it's scrutinised to, to the nth degree. Yes. And that, I believe, does have an effect on performance. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're constantly being asked questions mm-hmm. about who's in the team, whether or not you should be in the team or yeah. somebody else, it does affect performance, but it it doesn't appear that that was no. an issue when, yeah. you know, th- th- I'm, try- I'm trying to think of an example of, of, of a modern day player, if they were to be not selected or on the bench. Well, yeah, you take James Tedesco, for instance, for yeah. you know, New South Wales, if he got left out of the side, wow. 
And there was It'd so be. much talk about th- that through this year or this last season, sorry, yeah. that um, that he may yeah. m- miss out. You know, that was that was constant. Like it wasn't just an opinion. It it it, it sort of just snowballed. Uh, and and also w- with respect to James Tedesco, he's coming towards the back end of his career. Yeah. This is Mal Meninga at twenty six yeah, yeah. in and his, his absolute yeah, yeah. prime. Yeah. Which well, just shows you how good the other bikes were. Yeah, like Mel was a great player, and in in those days too, James uh, only only two reserves. So Mel Meninga was one, and Terry Lamb, who actually played in every, every game. game. Yeah, yeah every all club games. What mate, unbelievable. Was, yeah, there no method, change, yeah. was there method to Terry Lamb's madness? Like, is there is there something more behind that? Like, no, you know, putting your hand up to play every game. What it tends to suggest is you don't enjoy the training aspect. No, 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 no. Oh no, he was. No. A, or, or was it? Ca- well, or, or, or was it potentially cash payments? For no. you know, appearance fees, no, it, it, we, we it, didn't get much, mate. I tell you, no, mate, he, all was, up. he was the perfect interchange player, yeah, because he could uh, play so yeah, many play different anywhere. positions. Yeah. Um, he and I think the closer we got to the end of the tour, maybe in the back of Don's mind, thought, eh, it's a nice little bit of history here if he's you know, does get to play in all of these games, and it never caused any concern again within the group as to you know, why some players didn't play as much as they would have liked. It was just he was he was a wonderful tourist. He was good fun. He was great to be around. And, and you could put play. him on yeah, put in any anywhere. position, in any circumstance, mm. and he, he'd do the job for you. He, he was actually telling me um, a, a lot of the time you and him would run to tr- the training ground as opposed to catching the team bus. No, no that was Des Hasler. That, that, yeah, that, would have been <laughs> that was Desi. No, that was me too. I, I was it, just it, there, there, was a, there was a reason <laughs> no, look, behind mate, he tells me as well. Mate, the Dragonara, right? You had to be on the bus at 9 o'clock to go to training. Sterling was on the bus at one minute to nine every day. <laughs> well, I, I, I was... Good time timing. efficient. Good yeah, time didn't, efficiency. Yeah, didn't, didn't like to waste time. And, yeah, no, it was... Uh, I, I was in the sweet spot, James. Like... It was a very different tour, 86, than 82 was for me because in 82 I went away literally happy to play on the wing. I've said it before, on the wing at Blackpool on a Wednesday night just to be a part of it. it. That was the role I was To have that green and gold, right? Yeah. Just just to be on this tour, you know. Um, It it turned out better in 82. But but in 86 I was vice captain so I I felt like a a, a real responsibility. responsibility, Absolutely. Just won a fourth premiership title, come off an undefeated Origin Series. I'd played at Hull uh, for a year and a, a season and a half leading into 86. I knew the north of England. I loved the north of England. I knew Leeds so well. I knew my way around. My girlfriend at the time was a, a Leeds lass who was over there. If I needed a break, I'd go and visit her and a family type. It was just, it was perfect. For me, so mm. I, I couldn't have been in a, in a better position. You forgot to mention the casino at Leeds. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I was going to say, were, were you seen as a bit of a a, a, t- a tour guide because you had spent so much no, time over no, there? No, not really. No, no. It was uh, I, I knew my way around, but so did quite a few of the other other guys as well. No, we um, great spot, wasn't it, Pete? There was there was one day that I remember standing out, which wasn't planned whatsoever. We basically, Don said, that we're going to have a day out. You know, we're going to have a social day out. So he got the bus and basically just said to the bus driver, just take us out to the country. Oh. So we, we just went on a on a drive. Yeah, just, you know, beautiful country. was green and even though it was cold. Like too, and we just found a pub just out in the kind of the middle of nowhere. Like in the sticks. Just, yeah. just, just village somewhere yeah. type thing. And we all pile off and we go in there and, we you know, we, we had a drink um, and we just – we mixed with the locals. We got involved in some games with them type thing, you know, like people end up getting beers poured down there because they, <laughs> they had a blindfold on, they shouldn't have fallen for stuff like that. And at the end of it, and we were, we'd, we'd had a drink, someone came up with a, a, an idea that the Giants should take on Little men versus big men. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. midgets. It's in a, a bush. Bush. Take on in. A, a, in Outside in a wrestle. Wrestle, right. Yeah. So, like, great talking, ideas. No, yeah. no, it seemed like a good idea at the time until looked at the at the Giants and there was Stephen Rhodes, <laughs> there was Paul Sirenin, there was Noel Cleal, <laughs> there was Greg Dowling. There was, so I've looked next to me, I've got Terry Lamb, Greg Alex, and that. So, we kind of looked for, you know, quick strikes, get in and get out. Because if they got you, mm. like, oh, yeah, it was, yeah. it's all over type oh. thing. But we just had this huge wrestle in this forest. Yeah. 
where it was they were jumping out of the trees, the little men, <laughs> exactly. ambushing. We you. were like ninjas. <laughs> it, it sounds like there's plenty of organisation gone into this. Like it's not just like join up a wrestler. It's like right, we're going to be in the forest and split these teams up. No. No, oh, it just, oh, no, it just evolved, yeah, evolved yeah, into yeah, hiding. Yeah, right, okay. It started okay. out that we just wanted to bash each other and, <laughs> and physically get into it. And and um, and I've got to say, the the little men, some of them weren't that little. Um, it was just in comparison. Yeah. You know, Brett Kenny, Michael O'Connor, they weren't little blokes. Um but you didn't want to get into a bear hug with Roach, <laughs> Siren and any of <laughs> Good fun, but play. did you bring any of the locals in with you as well? Oh, no, oh, I'm glad you asked that. Pete just touched on a game we used to play. So we'd play with the locals with a spoon Spoons. and we'd blindfold one of our players and one of the Englishmen in the pub, right? <laughs> and what you had to do was put a big spoon in your mouth and hit each other on the top of the head like oh. that on hands and knees. Yeah, so. But we'd take the blindfold off our bloke. <laughs> <laughs> we we cave their heads in with the spoon. Oh. You know? oh, that's not funny, but it was fun. Well, it, it was fun at the time. They'd leave, <laughs> they'd, they'd leave concussed. Mm-hmm. Mate, but, honestly. Uh, our blokes, they're, 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 <laughs> they're, 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 they're they're As if you chat. fall for that. Well, well they did. They did. They did. They, they think they'd seen it It was in the wilderness, mm. James. Mm. But, you know, you talk about how different the game is now and we talk about the reserves and all that. Our major sponsors on the tour were Winfield and Forex. Yeah. So when I when I when I left Wollongong, my, a great coach of mine named Ray King said to me, "Well, son, good luck, uh, good luck up there." And he said, "The two things that ruin football players." He went, <laughs> "This <laughs> and this," <laughs> and they were our major sponsors. For, oh, yeah. So we had fridge fulls of forex and cartons of ciggies and what what mate whatever you wanted. Well, and that was a, that was a real boon for Gary Jack. Gary, <laughs> I reckon Gary Jack probably lost all great with player of the tour. And as I say, us Parramatta blokes, we had a pretty good relationship with with the, the Belmain blokes. Mm. I like like them, but Gary Jack and like, I guess to this day, I, I love him. Like he's mm. great company, great great player. Takes but, the Mickey out of himself, but he carries the reputation <coughs> of being Tom. the hardest man with a dollar that you, you've ever met. Like I don't know. Like there used to be a story that because he lived at Wollongong at the time, that when they'd finished training at Leichhardt Oval, he'd hang around. Because his mate would come on the tolls mm. back down to Wollongong, oh. and so that would, it, when he'd drive down, he'd wait for his mate to be there on the 40, toll booth and yeah, let him bro, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 yeah. cents, he'd give him a couple of bananas. <laughs> oh he'd knock off from training. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, what a player. There were two, two occasions that, <laughs> when Jimmy comes to mind. We're lying in his room watching a, a video. Oh, they were good night. You know, we'd, get, we'd go and get a video. We'd, but, First part of the tour, you go and you'd get a video recorder and you'd put it in one of the rooms, and that was the cinema. Oh, room. the cinema. Oh, yeah. right, okay, yeah. And, and everyone's and door you, always you'd open. That, you'd bring that with, yeah. Everyone's door was always open. Remember, yeah, yeah, so we'd. So oh, we'd, so in the, in the hotel, yeah, yeah, it's so just be, open door policy. Absolutely. Door policy. But, and but one room a, would have a, like an old school VCR. Yeah, yeah, cinema, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, so we're, so we're in there and we're in Jimmy's, uh, Gary Jack's room, lying back. And at one stage, he gets up and goes to the Brasco. And we looked down and he's left his wallet <laughs> exposed. So there would have been 12 of us in there. So we grabbed the wallet and he had 100 quid in there and we took the 100 and we put it back. But we showed the 100 to everybody saying, this is Gary's money. Mm. I said, put it in there. He comes back in. We watch the end of the movie. And at the end of the movie he goes, grabs his wallet, he opens up, there's nothing in there. And blows up like you wouldn't believe, about the 300 quid that he had in his wallet. That's, that's, that's disappeared. We, we left him on ten hooks for a while, but that was, yeah, there was, there was one, it went to three. At the end of games, every, um, every now and then it was somebody's responsibility to shout when you got back after a game, you had to shout the bar. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, most of us would do the right thing and you'd go to the top shelf and get the good stuff out. When Gary Jack shout came around, he'd been squirreling, squirreling away the cans of forex in, right. in his room. Yeah. So, so he shout, he just brought the product down. Didn't cost him a cent. Oh my! Goodness. You reckon we didn't throw the cans at him? <laughs> oh, hot! <laughs> that was it. So, so we'd ha- he'd had this reputation. He built on that during this tour. But great company and a great player who oh, I yeah, think was a, was as good as anybody. Mm, yeah. uh, played all five tests was good as anybody on that tour and what he produced on the paddock. Just tight as cramp when it comes to... Just 
very yeah. His a little, 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 little bit like Ray Price when they talk about Ray Price. Um, Ray's the same. First, when I went to Parramatta, first thing I did, I learnt to stand behind Ray Price because you missed out on nothing. Because if anything free, was, he, he would get it. <laughs> and they and they say that when you go, and it's true that when you go to a barbecue at Ray Price's place, you had a great time because you got everything you wanted. Because you had to take your own meat, you had to take your own beer. <laughs> um, I think Jimmy was along those lines. Oh, that's brilliant. So, in terms of getting together, have a movie night. I, I believe it was a cash allowance. As well that yeah. you that you were given on tour, it's a little bit different now. It wasn't you know, much, uh, mate. <laughs> what do you do? Wasn't doing? enough. What wasn't? What, what are we talking? Your, your weekly allowance? That? I would have no like, idea. I think, was it a couple of hundred pounds? Mate, a week look, I think back, almost think back was... at that time, representing football, it, it, it almost cost you money. Yeah, to, did. yeah. To play. Yeah. Oh, not, wow, that, re- not that you even cared about. I played Origin. I don't think if you got if you lost, I don't think you got. Yeah, what about if you, you were made, what about no you did not my first origin series I got 1500 bucks and 1500 bucks worth of stitches in my head <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean but but the, the big thing was and you said you had to pay remember if you made your debut like 30 million people would want a ticket right and you get all your That's family right, you had to, it ended up costing you to mm. pay for people to come and watch you play. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you've got your movie nights happening. What, what, what else would you, you lads do to, oh, to night, kill night. the time? We uh, we bought, each of us bought, we broke up into little groups and we bought a car, but an old shitty bomb, oh. right? So we had... Uh, go to the auctions and just yeah, buy it. we had this... Oh, we had this, oh you'd, go, you'd actually go to the auction yeah. to... And we'll, yeah. 40 quid. We, we, have, oh, we, we had this brilliant. green, lime green Saab Turbo, we called it. We made a horrible mistake one day. There was uh, there was Wally, Gino, uh, Roycey Simmons. I was going to say his nickname then, <laughs> and myself. We had this green turbo. But anyway, we say we went to a nightclub at night or whatever. We we made a horrible mistake one day of parking it out the front, and all the boys you couldn't miss this green lime thing. The green hornet. Yeah. The, anyway, all the boys saw the car there. We come back out, and the roof was caved into oh. the steering wheel. We couldn't get in. We had to get a paddle beater. <laughs> Yeah, so instead of being worth 40 quid, it was now worth 20 quid. No, like. Just scrapped the but thing. But just the boys had seen it and just went, oh, there it is. And and, and that in, in 82 that had happened as well where everyone bought it. Um, and I don't know if we learned our lesson because in 82, towards the end of the tour, I don't know if you, you – but somebody, somebody drove it home from the nightclub and because you're about to leave – it ended up in the canal. Drove into the there canal, were canals yeah. right behind the Dragon R. Right. Oh, the just put – the handbrake off and, and just and they just pushed, was, yeah. pushed it in, but unfortunately, when it hit the water, it the electrics sort of sparked and came to life. And there were a couple on a bridge who were looking at over the canal, and they saw the car go oh. in, and then saw the lights, and rang the police. Because are they thinking someone's in someone's there? gone in? Yeah. So the police had come, and fortunately, there was a bit of a current in the canal, and. The car had drifted away. <laughs> of course, if it had been Lights found, yeah. like the fines would have been enormous for, for doing that. On the flight home on Qantas, as we're leaving the UK, we're looking out over the, <laughs> the Pacific or just to see if we can see the roof, yeah. you know, type thing. And, but the same thing happened because you need to have – we had a bit of time off. Like you, you asked about the social life and that. You'd, you'd play once a week basically, whether you're playing on the weekends or, or middle week. So you'd have a social two, three nights, go out and enjoy, and then getting closer to the game, you've got fair dinkum and, you know, you sort of you basically... Behave yourself. Pre- yeah, you've got, you, you got ready yeah, yeah. for it. Yeah. But, you know, social, like, there were nightclubs that we'd go to that, you know, after a short period of time, cost us nothing to get in because we were regulars and we got looked after type thing. And um, so the, the, the social side of it, like the footy was great, the social side was just as good. But again, you just had to keep a lid on it to make sure that it didn't affect it. But there were there were clubs there that we became very well known mm. at. And, Especially um, when you wear your kangaroo gear. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you give away a little bit of stuff early because that got you, you know, yeah. that, ah, that yeah, worked in your favour. A pair of training favor. shorts yeah, or whatever it, it may be whatever, to a couple yeah. of the doormen. Yeah, exactly. You get a no no point in queuing but we, uh, up. What, what was that bar we used to go to around the corner? But I forget what the name was. It had a big jukebox in it and everyone 
Mate, a place called in, Digby's we used yeah, to go we, to. We'd get in there singing and songs every night and just having a good time, you know. It, is it so you were based in Leeds? Leeds. Yes. Yeah, the whole the whole Dragon time. The whole time. And, yeah. 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 And just, oh, that's good that you 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 you've yeah, got base. that base and yeah. not moving from city. You can actually establish a, a bit of a network and you know where you're going. Kind yeah, of and, thing. and we were on the sixth floor of the Dragonara Hotel. Um and as Locker said, you didn't worry about locking doors because you found out early if you locked the door it'd get Get kicked in. <laughs> get a hole in it. And so I think management were much happier for us just to have that open open door policy. Um, and it was above a casino, which Ooh. which was a two, two-edged sword. Um, very dangerous for Peter. Well, I, I know, like, I, I became very good mates with Roy Simmons. We we both liked a bit of a punt. And I don't know how many times you'd come home at 2, 3 a.m., got the munchies, like, you're, you're hungry, you haven't eaten and that. And how many times... I'd go in and get two rounds of toasted ham sandwiches, and they cost me three hundred quid. Yeah, you know, like it's just, it was, it was, towards the end of the tour, I actually had to buy a game, a crown and anchor game. I don't know if you've ever heard of, it, but it's a gambling game where you get these dice. They've got a, they've got a, the the hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades, and a crown and an anchor on it, and you get this mat, and you can bet on. What the what's going to come up when you roll the two dice? Okay. I was starting to run out of money, and the boys were looking for something a little bit, you know, of interest maybe on a bus trip or whatever. So the crown and anchor would come out. <laughs> that kind of funded me through France. Ah, uh, yeah, that was. I did uh, you have a bit of an inside edge or the inside? No, he had, no, 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 he had, just, a, he had a load of dice. I just, <laughs> this way, you know, it bends over. And hey, no, 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 no load of dice. <laughs> it's just you play long enough, they're going to lose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Hey, um, I, I know we've been going into things that, that happened on the tour, but I want to take you back to the very beginning, Blocker, because um, again, a very, a very different time. Um, there was a noticeable omission from the squad um, in Wayne Pierce mm. not being selected. Uh, very controversial. You as a, as a teammate, uh, what, what, are you, what are your memories from, from that time with, with Junior? And a great mate too and, a, and our captain. Uh, he was great mates with Pete too. They, they roomed together. together. They roomed yeah. together in the first tour. Um, mate, if I picked any side ever that I've ever played with, Wayne Pierce would be in the team. I tell you, he was a great competitor. Uh, I remember he, he'd had a knee, a knee problem. He had a knee reconstruction and was coming back from it. And um, he had to do a fitness test at um, at Redfern Oval. And we were all, you know, thinking, oh, mate, he, Wayne Pierce, the fittest bloke in the game. He'll, mate, he'll pass this in flying colours and away you'll go, you know. Uh, and apparently, I, I, I don't really know the full stories or the ins and outs of it. Only what he was, what he told me was. He stumbled in one of the potholes at, at Redfern. Now, it would be easy to do that at Redfern because there was plenty of potholes. And um, they pulled him out of the tour because he actually had stumbled in the run or the fitness test. And, you know, basically basically that was a story. And, um, mate, you talk to him still today, James. I'm sure, I'm sure you might have talked to him a bit about it and, mate, he's still filthy. But, mate, great competitor, um, unfortunately. And, mate, it had still hurt him the way he is as a person. And it still hurt him today, knowing that he didn't go on that tour after mm. how good he was in '82. Like he was a he was a superstar in '82 in England and a wonderful tourist. Like he wasn't a drinker, but he was always a life of the party. Yeah. As blocked, I, I I roomed with him um, in '82, and you become pretty close, mm. you know, in, in, in that environment. Till you cut up his skipping rope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that had to go. Um, and <laughs> and I, I think man, both he and I think it was some controversy. Eric Growth. Pretty sure Eric passed a fitness test as as well, mm. but then but then basically failed it because there was fluid on his knee. Eric play, Eric for the whole time I played with him, always his knee was swollen. Yeah, but it never impeded like the dy- not dynamic way that he played the game. Um, it's just you had to understand his medical history and went. But when they saw fluid on the knee, they thought, well, he can't do it. And I, you know, it's. Junior was great. He was a great tourist. So was so was Eric. You know, different in their way. Um, Junior was probably more outgoing. Um, Eric more laid back. You know, but just good company. I like being around it, didn't he? Well, Eric? I was. I'm still a bit filthy with Eric because I I toured with him on a few different occasions and on a few occasions I'd thrown in f- to buy a guitar because one of the other outlets you want on a tour is you know someone to be able to sit back and play the guitar. I threw in twice. I, I didn't hear him strum a note on either of those tours. <laughs> He's got two brand new guitars. Like he owes me a performance, basically. 
<laughs> but they they both missed out. But the the flip side of that was that it opened up an opportunity for two yeah. other guys. And yeah. I think Greg Alexander mm. was one of those, you know, young bloke coming in and, um, you know, freakish talent. Mm. Um, so, yeah, gutted for the, the two guys that missed out, mm. but, you know, the two guys that got the opportunity grabbed it with both well, hands. I remember, I remember, Pete, that the, uh, the day and the night before we went on tour, we went in the Camperdown Travel Lodge. Do you remember this? Went in the Camperdown Travel Lodge, a whole touring party to stay there and then we went out to the airport that's, and went. That's your first... That was our first, first point meet, of meet, meeting yeah, point, Camperdown. Yeah. We virtually lived there through Origins and Test Matches mm. and that, didn't we? But it was, a, it was a place where we all met. And Eric was a, Eric was actually there that night. We went out we went out for dinner yeah. and went out. Eric was there. And then the next day when we were driving out to the airport to go on the tour, where's Eric? Not there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was... It, it was pretty. It, it was pretty. Well. As I say, I think at some stage both of them passed a fitness test, but after that, for some reason, yeah. they were medically ruled out. I didn't go. The, the tour started actually. You, you went and played a test match in Papua New Guinea. In New Guinea, yeah, I did. We uh, half us went to New Guinea and half us went to somewhere else to play. We went, no, no, did we? I played because because I'd. I'd been on a couple of tours before to different places in New Zealand, all that anyway. So we played on the – it was like a road in New Guinea. So we play in this game uh, in New Guinea. I don't I don't get tackled, mate. I'm just passing before the line not because I knew. Anyway, on the plane on over – Just on the, the ground, the, the ground on, on the yeah. plane over, you know when you get those big grazers on your yeah. side of your legs and I could see – because we had to wear our suits and that on the plane to go over. I could see blokes picking their – their suit pants off their oh. off the scabs on their legs and all. That. Thanks for sharing. That. Well, that's <laughs> no, true, I mean, but, no. but hey, yeah. I mean, look silly, mate. I didn't get tackled in the whole thing. I didn't have anything. I didn't even have a graze, you know. Well, I don't think <coughs> I don't think the other half was we played. I think we might have just met up with you in Singapore or somewhere. Yeah, something, and, something and, happened and there. Was, we play, yeah, we played. So, mate, talk about extremes from New Guinea. To England. Of England. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the reason I, I bring up the, the Wayne per Pierce uh, omission or non-selection and the same with uh, Eric Growth, Growth. And, and the fact that speaking to Junior, he's still – Burning. It still burns him now. And I think that, for me, that that's – I want to paint the picture to the, to the story, to, to the <laughs> listeners, just how much this meant. Because I think if today a player missed – a kangaroos tour, they get over it pretty quickly, and I, I, well, it's sad, unfor sad unfortunately, to say, but you I, know, I, I remember, I remember a, a, a kangaroos team. I think it was twenty fourteen, and the, the, a, a, a lot of players just decided to have because it was after the World Cup, yeah. and it was sort of like. You're an Australian oh. sort of. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 14 in the we, four, we, four nations yeah. tournament yeah, here. Yeah, and, we would have. Quite a few yeah. players decided to that, that they weren't going to participate. And I, I James, we would have done anything to get on that yeah. tour, mate. Anything. I, I think that's you know? the, that's the picture I'm trying to paint. Yeah. That this was it was the absolute ultimate. Like this is a. I, I, I'll do anything. I'll. I'll I'm. I just want to go away for three months. Yeah, I, I know I, the prestige. Yeah. I know the feeling. I know the memories. Yeah. I know how much I'm going to treasure this moment. Well, I reckon the reason that J Wayne Pierce is, is so gutted is not the fact only that he didn't get to represent his country more, but he knew what he was missing out on. Mm. He knew everything that went around it, like just what – Just how special – Just what the next th three months – like honestly, the, the three months – it was just from from the beginning to the end, yeah. just the time of your life. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, it's hard to put into words. It's yeah. really, fantastic. It's, you yeah, know, it's you just had to be a part of it, and if you knew what you were missing out on, that yeah, yeah. I, so he I'd knew he, he knew he knew what yeah. he was missing, and yeah. that's why it still burns into this so. day. Mm. Yeah, I, I I guess I I don't know if we will ever get back to having the kangaroos on on such a pedestal with the the way origin is and 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 the amount of you know the, the play welfare and number of games and whatnot but i think Do you reckon if they played over in england they would if they went and played wigan and, and warrington and all that again on a tour i reckon i reckon people would come out of the woodwork mm. over there they would love it i don't mm. know and this is no disrespect to anyone or, or any anything else i think you have to go to england and play against all those english teams i don't think it would work 
the other way around. No. Yeah. No, I, that, that to me, that, yeah. it sets it apart. But it'd work. Going and, it'd and work over there. Just going to those places and playing, you know, Unreal. like we, we, you may not know that much about the English game, but we all know about St Helens and Wigan mm-hmm. and Bradford, like and all of those teams up there and, and Huddersfield where the game, you know, basically More came began, from. Yeah. Exactly, we, you know, we, we went back to, uh, this is another, another tour that we went on anyway, we, we went and played St Helens and the, and the bus used to pull up at the dressing room. And we jump off yeah. and, and go. We played St Helens one day, and Mal Meninga had played a season at St yes, Helens and right. made their team of the century. Played yeah. one season. Mm. We were getting off the bus. I reckon that, no word of a lie. I reckon there was five thousand people around the bus, all singing. There's only one Mal Meninga mm. as he got off the bus. It was. I've never. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't happen here. We're a bit more mm. conservative or whatever. But over there, mate, it was just like. And and you know even you know even even a bloke like Bob Linder who was a great great player I think he won the player of the tour in '86 Bob yeah. Linder the lock forward uh, he he'd played at uh, he played at Castleford and mate you should have seen the people surrounding that bloke when you know blokes who had played from this Australian side in the English game it was it was unbelievable well that was the strange thing like it, during that tour when we played um, against the club sides we actually played against a lot of a lot of Aussies. Australians. Yeah. Like yeah. Graham Leedy yeah. was over there. Chris, Chris Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Uh, we played a game, Andrew Eddinghouse and Mark McGall. Played for Leeds. Was sender pairing. John yeah. Doherty was, was over there yep. at the time. So Gavin was Miller. That, was, that a bit stra- was that a bit strange? It was, yeah, a little bit strange. But, yeah, it was good fun. But it was, um, yeah, so the, 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 the influence, you know, yeah. with, and, and players – I think um, you know realised just what an opportunity and experience it was to, to go over there. And the English, I, I've been asked a lot about eighty two and eighty six, who was better and all that kind of stuff. It, it, I can't answer that. You know, yeah. what I do know is eighty six. I think the the f the it was better opposition. Yeah, okay. And I and I spoke about that. So and to, the pressure to, too. To, to, yeah, to carry that. Mm. Was, uh, um, because the English had some wonderful young players, like Joe Lydon was a was a, a great talent. Yes. Gary Schofield was coming through. Andy Goodway, Kevin Kevin Ward was in the front row. He came across and oh, along with yes. Cliff Lyons. Yes, he did. Yeah, they were the best players in the eighty seven so grand was Lee final. Crooks. Crooks, Lee Crooks was, was a great player. Crooks, he was there. Yeah, guys like Andy Platt. Um, mm. Ellie and, Hanley, Andy Good, play? Ellery Hanley. You, you played with him. Oh, I played with about, a how good was Ellery? Oh, he was a superstar, Pete. I never seen a bloke who could run across the field as quick, yep. as going forward. He was he was unbelievable, but he was a mate. He was a superstar, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Even when he came with us, in in when we uh, made the grand final eighty eight, we don't make the grand final if Hillary Hanley's not playing with us. No. Mate, no. he was that good. He mate he he just come over here and went on a roll and just. He so just we played against him off. on he that was a great too. He, he, got, he got injured at some stage, sure, but he was yeah. in the test side. Yeah. Mm. Derek Fox, Gary, was Gary Schofield, Andy Gregory, Gary yeah. Schofield. So yeah, high quality side. opposition. Oh, good that you, Well, it, it, up against. Th- yeah. there were quality players. You know yeah. that maybe they weren't at their their best, and you know they, they went on to have great careers built on what they mm. did then. You know because they they were some of them were, were young players. You know, Sean Edwards might have played in that series as well, type mm. thing. So when you look at those names, like there's quality yeah. there. Yeah. Know? Hey, I just want to take you back to a, a point blocker because I, I spoke with Aaron Woods and, and Wade Graham uh, about the 2017 World Cup that was, was actually based here in Australia. But in order to kick off their camp, they went to Fiji um, and they brought all the families with them. Um, what was – you spoke a little bit about that first night you meet at the, the hotel. yeah. yeah. Well, How's the, the, the introduction, the, the first night of camp? Oh, the first night of camp, unbelievable. But you talk about families and that. Like we, we, when we went, the wives or the girlfriends or whatever weren't allowed in the, in the hotel. If they'd come over to visit or whatever, you had to leave yeah. the hotel. They to stayed go around and, the corner. Yeah, the they stayed, well, yeah, yeah, they weren't allowed in the mm. hotel. So, yeah, but the first night, oh, mate, you know, you dream all your life. About making a kangaroo tour, and I know Pete said it before. You know, you wake up with your old man, and that was the thing. You know, watching Australia play in England, so you always dreamed about it. And then all of a sudden, it's there, and you're, you're there the night before before you're going to fly off to England. Mate, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to admit, you, you flew. I, th- I thought you got the boat over. <laughs> Mate, it was not that long ago. It's not that long ago. <laughs> you know what I really enjoyed? I nearly got sent over on the boat. <laughs> we played at a couple of different venues too over there. In fact, the first test 
was at Old Trafford. Old Trafford, that's and I, right. And you know, I, I love my English soccer, soccer. As, you, as you know, James. So to play at Old Trafford, and then we played Ellen, Ellen Road, which are, you know, a couple of soccer grounds to start off. But to go to Old Trafford, which everybody in the world, know, if, if you're a soccer fan, it's the theatre of dreams, yeah. you know. So to, to go there as a rugby league player, to, and I think you will find that the ball boy for that test match was Ryan Giggs. Really? I think you'll That's find right. it. Ryan, I remember that he talked about Yeah, that, he was yeah. a mad rugby league follower. His, I his remember father played his, yeah. in the witness area and, and I'm sure that you'll find I've got the program home and I think Ryan Gibbs, Gibbs, Ryan Giggs is the, the ball, ball boy. boy. Um, and I won't bore you but it's memorable for myself as well because when I got to, to the ground and I'm, we're getting chased to play this test match, I look down at my boots and they're laced differently. And that's not right. Like uh, they're not one's my boot and one's not. You know, I don't know what's happened here, but I, I can't play in in these because they're not they're not right. What was one your training boot? And one no, your no, other no, boot? no. One was a boot that I. Right. It, it was they were they were they were laced differently, and one was a different size. You know? So I'm looking and I'm I'm about to play a test match for my country. So they took me. Oh, hang on, hang on. You, would you not be responsible for bringing your yeah. own boots to the game? Yeah. You've got, I, I, you pulled I, them I out of the bag. Them, yeah. No, no, I've got them out of my bag and they're, they're, they're different. <laughs> so. Bloody Brett Kenny. Stay with me. <laughs> the, the only option I've got now is to get another pair of boots. And so they take me into the boot room at Old Trafford where the Manchester United boots are. And you've never seen any like it. I reckon each of the players had... A, a, set, a pair of boots for every day of the week, and a couple in reserve. Like you've never seen, and Melda Marcos wouldn't have wouldn't have left. Like she would have just, it, it, you've never seen like. So I'm going along trying on a pair of boots, and the ones that fit me like a glove were Brian Robson's, great great Manchester United player. So I figure, well, I, this is my only alternative. So I go out, and I'm about to run out onto Old Trafford to play a rugby league test match wearing the boots of Brian Robson. Until Michael O'Connor, on the other side, he's got his boots out and they look different because they're laced differently. I've got one of his oh. and he's got one of oh. mine, which we've mixed up the last game that we played type thing. But I was that close to running out oh. of Old Trafford. I'm kind of kicking myself that we actually found them because uh, that would have been... Like, yeah, it would have been a pretty cool been, story, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would have been, been nice. Hey, um, just on that, on that first test, I, I've read reports about the atmosphere, um, 50,000 people mm. at the Theatre of Dreams, you know, all barracking for the Brits. Mm. Um, you'd played over in England before uh, at Wembley uh, with Hull FC, but I guess half the crowd, they would have been on your side. What was it What was it like for you to go, and go into that cauldron atmosphere with 50,000 or 49,950. Land of hope and glory and all that sort yeah. of stuff. That, that's that's the thing that gave us the biggest buzz, not only oh, the you crowd. Got, yeah. But we, mate, I used to, oh, no, I shouldn't say it, but I used to love the English national, national anthem. It pumped me up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Same as the Kiwi one. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, oh, gee, that's not a bad anthem, yeah. that one, you know? But, um, yeah, oh, mate, just, just hearing them sing and carrying on and, Mate, especially if the English scored a try or something like that, you could it was deafening. You couldn't the, hear yourself think. The, there was never any animosity no. in the atmosphere. Uh, yeah, I, I, okay, I, you, yeah. I think you always felt respect, you know, from yeah, them. They, and, and they fact, cheer towards, a good try from Towards Australia, the end of the yeah. tour, you know, they were openly appreciative of, the of our style of play type yeah. thing and that, yeah. you know. But but certainly, you know, you, you knew that that they were Cheering for a, a, a English victory and doing so in the, their own style, you know, the singing that that fantastic. But I never felt anything but joy mm. playing. Like you don't get to play in that environment too often. Mm. You know, it's rare occasions, and, and it is so different to the crowds over here. Yeah. Like it, it really is. Yeah. Like the the noise, the atmosphere, the chant. It, yeah. It's all part of the theatre of. You know, well, European, British sport. Well, you'd know better than anybody, but we certainly, mm. you know, you, that's 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 one a of bit, the great memories that you come back here or something. We, we, was that your first time, Blocker, uh, be, being over there playing a, playing a it test was, match? Yeah. yeah, first well, time over well, here. 
what are you feeling when you when you walk out into Hol- Old Trafford? And I know what it's like Mate. when that noise just hits you. But you can't believe it. You, like going on, my mind was was you know sitting up with the old man watching this and going, "Mate, this is this is it. This is what it's about." You know, standing there and playing the national anthems, both teams and all that sort of stuff. Walking out, they used to do the walk. Remember, we walk, walk together. out with our teams. Was that was that a new experience for you? Walking it was, out together. Yeah, yeah, we never, yeah, we never did that uh, here. We, you know, when we were young kids, they used to line up the teams and shake hands before yeah. the game and all that sort of stuff. But never, never actually walk out with the team. Yeah. But, was, it, but deafening, like the. <laughs> but we we were pretty lucky that we'd played Origins. Which not as not as noisy or as loud, but a similar sort of feel. So yeah, okay. You know, to have that experience of origin up in Queensland, I reckon it sort of got you. Well, me anyway. I don't don't speak for Pete, but for me anyway, got you a little bit. You know, knowing you know what you're coming up against. You know, I think apart from the crowd too, the, the the big games played in England, there's a kind of a pomp and a ceremony about them. You know, mm. which it's again a wonderful thing. You know, like. I know, you know I was taught to play at Wembley and, you know, there were royalty there and, yeah. and as you, you you walked out with your tracksuit on and um, as Stephen said, I, I saw blokes singing Abide With Me with tears in their eyes, yeah. you know, like the emotion. Mm-hmm. Tears yeah, are making the Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I'm the same. Look, it's good. On my arm, give me goosebumps well, thinking about we, that. It's, you don't, we don't get the opportunity to, to be exposed and in front of that too often. That's Did you what find origin so a little bit by, like that up yeah, there? Oh, yeah, but different, but different, different yeah. atmosphere, mm. as, as I say. But it got you a little bit, bit ready. A bit more animosity, yeah. which is great because origin, the, the fabric of origin is us against them. Mm. And whilst obviously test matches are the same, as I say, I never mm. felt anything but respect from mm. English crowds mm. whenever yeah. I played in front of them. It, it, it's funny how like you can, you can talk uh, about these memories and you've got this this snapshot or this slight video camera footage from your own eyes, but it's how, how it made you feel. Feel. Mm. Yeah. It's all about how it made you feel. Like you yeah. talking about Wembley, talking about Old Trafford. So I can remember going out there and remember how it made me feel. Yeah, yeah. 100%. It's hard to describe it that is. too, isn't it? It's hard because you don't want to sound like, you know, mm. <laughs> melancholy or whatever, but, you know. It's a, mate, it's a great feeling, unbelievable. Mm. And just a sense of pride. Like, I don't know, Pete, probably the same, but just with that Australian jumper on and looking at it and just going, mate, this is it. I'll do anything, yeah. anything to win. Did, were, were you yeah. going up a level block because you were coming up against Great Britain? Did, did, 100%. 100%. Did, like you played yeah, against the, the Kiwis before. Yeah, 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 no, you but, coming up against mate, Great Britain in their own backyard. Yeah. You felt like you were. They'll always, James, be, no, the, they'll James, always no, be the old yeah. enemy. James, mm. no, no disrespect to the Kiwis, mate. We had some great wars against them, but the pinnacle for me was playing against the Englishmen, or the Poms, as we call them. Mm. Playing the Poms, mate. That's what we we grew up watching, going, oh, you know, I want to be there one day. Mm. Let's see if we can get there, you know. Yeah. Well, well, Stella, you spoke about that that softening up period. Um, I've read some reports on the game and, and seen uh, so, some of the highlights. Some of the things they won't show is, you know, it was a different era. Um, in terms of some of the the niggling tactics, what was it like for you in in the middle there blocker when perhaps the you know Australia had pretty much sealed victory was was there a bit of biff happening and I guess an extra <coughs> little bit of complexity is you've got a French referee, um, mm. which Julian I, Raskin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if it's <laughs> if that's the yeah, trying to do it's it's basically it's trying to do the right thing, right? Well, we've, we can't have a an English referee, we can't have an Aussie referee, so we'll go with the French. But but, but, but see, in those days, you talk about soften up period. That's exactly what it was, but it was expected. It wasn't um, how will I explain it? It was it wasn't something that you didn't get yourself ready for because you knew it was coming anyway. Yeah, that, do you understand what I mean? So. That's the greatest euphemism I've ever heard. You referring to it as niggling tactics. Niggling yeah. tactics. <laughs> it was brutal and it was violent. Yeah. And again, I don't want to keep going back to 82, but there is a correlation between them. In 82, I'll, I'll go and have a look at this foot, bit of footage. In 82 in the test match against England at, we are in Hull, uh, Boothbury Park. There's a try set up. Craig Young, Craig Young. puts... Wayne Pierce away to score under the post, and the English fullback George Fairbairn, Fairbairn. Yeah, that's right. hits 
Craig Young, as he passes the ball, with the greatest stiff arm tackle mm. you will it ever went see parallel in the ground. Life. I remember it. You know, in cartoons when <laughs> people yeah, spin yeah, around yeah. the arm <laughs> type thing. And Craig Young, who was a block of granite, mm. crumbled. Just, just one piece. Today he would get three years. You'd be on the sidelines. But it was intentional. The, it was it, yeah. not, yeah. no disguise. No, nothing. <laughs> and to, to Craig Albert's credit, he, he got, got up. up Craig, he yeah. went back in the Great play, Craig Young. No action to Try was scored. That was. But you know, James, you know, you know yourself. Like you know, Pete. Pete was talking about counting numbers a little bit. They can sort of sit back and sort of. Uh, in our position, you can't sit back. There's no, there's no. Oh, I'll, I'll just see. I'll just tip me toe in the water here and mm. see. It, it, it's, it's not in the fabric of what we do. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. You can't. So, you got to go all in. Pete, no, sit back. Go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Flog. You know. Turn it up again. What are you doing then? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it, it, you know, different, different mindset, different way to organise, different, you know, different and, mentality. And the big thing yeah. again when we spoke about many times, two. Two reserves, no yeah. interchange. Once you were off, you were off. So you're knocking 80 minutes off because you've got Meninga on the bench and, and Terry, Terry Lamb. Lamb. Yeah, but even even back in those days, the embarrassment of getting injured and coming off, it was a yeah. it was a badge of honour. Like if you got a cut on the head or and they wrap your head up and all that, that was a that was like oh, no, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, cut yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not, like, I'm not leaving. I'll, I'll need to literally be compound fracture. Well, you, to, well, you couldn't to, let the team yeah. down because yeah. you didn't have. Yeah, it was like yeah, you didn't have. You know, eight yeah. reserves to come on. You play twenty minutes and away you go. You know. Was there a particular player from the English team that dished out the fair, fair, fair share of niggling tactics as oh, as I mean, put, or it was just a mate, it was oh, just well, mate, Lee, Lee Crooks. I, I got I got great admiration for Me Lee Crooks. Mate, I love Kevin Ward. Kevin Ward. Without any disrespect to any other front row I ever played against, I th- I think he's the best one that I played against. Um, for all around um, toughness, skill, mm. um, like he, mate, he was a real good player. But the, uh, mate, I played against a million really good players. But you know, like he he was that, and and Lee Crooks was the same too. So they had this um, they had this mix of generally you're good at one or two things, aren't you? Well, Lee Crooks and, and Ward had this mix of being able to be um, ability with the ball, but also if you want to get in the gutter with them, they get in the gutter with you, if you understand what I mm. mean. So generally blokes have got like yeah. don't have, have that full gambit of what, mm. you know, of what you need. And, mate, they were, mate, they were, they were good players. Which and, again, and, and they give it to you too, you know. Makes this bloke special because he was very much like an English style forward because he was a great ball player. That was in fear, Pete. Pass before well, the line. Oh, it's, want to get it. But... But, you know, James, That's, you're talking about, like, the violence and all that sort of stuff. And I said, and it's expected. You, you know, you're standing and attacking, you offload the ball. You you know you're going to get it. Yeah. it. It's coming. Like, there's no... Um, you brace, you brace well, no, for well, you, it's come, uh, uh, There's no, oh, I've got, the, got rid of the ball. That's unreal. Now I can just mm. sit up and watch the bloke go down the room. But, mate, honestly, just straight away, you, you'd get hit or whatever, mm. you know, so... But it was, but it was, bit, but it was bit, expected. Yeah, and you give a bit back as well. Hundred percent. Well, that was the rule. They were the rules. Retaliate first. Yes. <laughs> retaliate, <laughs> retaliate first. But they were the rules, mate. But that's but me growing up. You know, I used to watch. You know, I used to watch Craig Young and Dallas Donnelly and mate, all that. You know, John O'Neill and Sat- I thought that's how you play. I didn't think. Oh, um, you know, you're not allowed to do. Mm. Oh, I'm watching them guys and going. Oh, all right, okay, I get it. It was just That's, the norm. That was the norm. It wasn't. Yeah. yeah, wasn't the way you're supposed to play. It was just how you play. I don't know. Mm. We well, play with Price. Ray Price, Cumberland threw me at Leichhardt one day. They're still trying to fill in the hole. He hit me that hard, <laughs> mate. I'm telling you, mate. He was good at it, wasn't he? Little hit throw. He was. He was the best at it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you go on and win the first test, um, and you've got two weeks uh, before you take on Great Britain again. Um, What's the the celebrations like? Obviously, you've got it's not just a two week holiday, but you've got some games to play in between there as well. But what's the the immediate aftermath back to Leeds? Well, we celebrate after every game, hmm. uh, maybe more so after the test matches because they carried more more weight. Um, but again, um, the freedom that was given to players was was well received. Um, I didn't go, but there was a European trip that. I know uh, Chris Mortimer, Brian Niebling, mm. Dunny might have, like 
half a dozen, eight of them went away. And again, the beauty of that is, you know, Europe is is an hour away yeah. type thing. So um, again, I, I think I probably went and spent some time with my girl uh, and her family. Um, so th- there was freedom there, but the celebrations w- w- we celebrated after every win, yeah. mm. um, and and that was. But we also we also had like yourself and and Wally. You know that that virtually run the show, with no disrespect to anyone else. But you know, if if we needed if we needed to be told to pull our heads in, if we went a bit over the top or whatever, which might have happened a couple of times, <laughs> but, but you know they they uh, they they were leaders. They were leaders of men, so they yeah. would say, you know, maybe you got to pull your head in or yeah, you know, whatever. Who are the ones getting in trouble, Pete? No, nah, there's no one ever. No, who, who who did you have to no, pull the reins back? It's. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pick anybody. Everybody had their moments. Everybody had, had fun. Yeah, mate. Like yeah. it was just. We have fun. You know, you, it's it's just a matter of not. There's a line. Mm. Yeah. And no. One, n- and the line it, was, we was a fair way down. Yeah. You know, um, but I, you know, I think everybody realised. Mm. Yeah, you know, but sometimes, just had to. But that'd be another thing of letting your teammates down too, Pete. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Would, and and it was just a matter. It wasn't necessarily. It was just come. But Let's go. Yeah. Time to go home. Yeah. yeah, and that, and then if if everyone was going, then well, Roy Simmons is a great character, as Pete said. He's a great mate of ours. He, he is the greatest tourist ever. I've been in nightclubs with him on tours, and the bouncers come over and say, "Mate, get down off the table, otherwise we'll kick you out." <laughs> and he'd give that much lip, like give that much lip. Anyway, they'd start to come back over after <laughs> half a dozen times. He'd grab his own shirt and his pants and throw himself <laughs> he, down the stairs. He, he throw himself out. He, he, threw, he threw himself out. He did. This guy. Yeah. They're going to kill him. Walked into the club. You <laughs> could always tell where Roy, Royce can't dance. Royce is from Cowra. Um, he, he doesn't Great dance. Great bloke. But he'd Amazing. Be, he'd be I was the, coached by him and I amazing love, the bloke. Bloke. love him. Amazing bloke. I love but him He'd too. be on the dance floor and you could only, you, you could <laughs> work out where he was. Because he'd have the, he'd uh, have the, 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 the That was his dance move, the two yeah, fingers. Oh, yeah. funny, man. And the policeman, uh, the, pol- policeman the, the security guy hmm. honestly came across and said, this bloke. We, he got a, said, no, look, he's fine, he's fine. No. But eventually they came and grabbed him. <laughs> <for himself>. <laughs> and Royce, <laughs> uh. you, you know, when you get into a situation like that with security, you're thinking, well, you know, you, we don't want this to go the wrong way, mm. we don't, you know, because if he's, you know, if he gets yeah. stuck in. Yeah, but it's going to be an we're, all we're bro- yeah, be. yeah. <laughs> but he looked at the bloke he said, not a problem. <laughs> grabbed the <laughs> shot and, yeah. and walked, himself out, walked himself out of yeah. the car. Greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, but hey, James, hey, James you talk about you talk about <laughs> tough blokes and leaders, mate. He'd jump into the palms, wouldn't he? Yeah, mate. Mm-hmm. Royce, he, I'm telling you, he would have broken a few nose in his time playing well, against. Them. Well, he'd established his toughness, oh, mate. in the Origin series, yeah, leading yeah. up to that. He did, and that's where he probably got his jump because he had Ben Elias nipping at his heels. You know, ben, what a what a hooker what a he was. Yeah. But Royce was able to keep him at bay. Royce was a real tough. English type yeah. player, tough. I think. You know, like. Middle of the, nothing's coming through here. Mm. Like skillful out of you know, with his work out of dummy half, but not a lot of flair about him. But he He'd, just nothing yeah. got past him, and uh, his service was good. We'd, we'd pack in scrums, James. This is true. He'd put his head right next to mine and go, if they had the loose head or whatever, he'd go, mate, let him get it, let him take it. True story, mm-hmm. and just, <laughs> just mad. I remember you, you remember you remember mentioning that about the origin. I remember one day he got. You all remember this game? He got man of the match yeah. in, up in Queensland. Queensland yeah. He was falling over, stumbling. I know this is a bad thing, but he was falling over, stumbling, and we were at the scrum going, "Mate, hurry up! What are you doing? <laughs> Get your like couldn't find his feet. He's falling oh. over. He didn't know where he was. <laughs> didn't know what the score was. Yeah. Yeah. But I, tough, tough man. But he jump. He'd actually jump into blokes and stiff arm him and that. You know, but. <laughs> he loved game. it. Yeah. He loved it. Different time. Um, you've got your two weeks. Some blokes have gone away. Preparation for the second test um, at Allen Road. What are the, what's the the thoughts going into that? You've got a chance to to seal the series victory. Obviously, you've got plenty of games to come, but you've got an, an opportunity to to come and uh, and win the Ashes. Yeah, I, look, I don't think we put any extra pressure on ourselves. We was just preparing for a test match. Which you leave nothing to chance. I don't think Don made any changes no, he didn't, to no. the um, to the test side. So there was a nice continuity there. We were confident after what we'd done at 
in Manchester. Did, did, did a lot of you, because the, the, there were a number of games between that test match, did a lot of you play those midweek every, games? No, every now and then. Like there was, there was a, it was a self-described group of kangaroos and emus. But the, the guys who weren't, who didn't, weren't involved in the test would call themselves the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, but again, play, it, it, was, it was just a piss take. Like yeah. you know, mm. It was just – there was nothing – there was no you know, line drawn yeah. between them. Um, but as I say, everybody pretty much was playing once a week and uh, so the, the preparation for the test was was no different to, to any other that I can mm. recall. I don't think there was any, any talk about. But just looking, looking at the fixtures that, that you play, you play on October the 25th. You play Great Britain at Old Trafford. Um, 29th of October, you play Halifax. The 2nd of November, you play St. Helens. The 4th of November, you play Oldham. And then on November the 8th, you play Great Britain again. So there's three games to be played. Like yeah. Would the so emu, you'd, you'd emus have played not all of them? All of them because that, there's what there's a game on the second and then a game on the fourth. Yeah, no, there'd, there'd be there'd be there'd be a few blokes that have like 28 that blokes. Played, yeah. all, you know, like Terry Lamb's playing all of them all as well. Them. By the way, yeah, like, all of them. yeah. I remember uh, I remember Crusher Clear. Like Crusher didn't like trainer, but what a great ball runner he was. And we we played against Halifax one day, and um, they said we need a, a bloke to play on the wing. Crusher could run the ball, unbelievable. Mm. So we said he hated training. He said, oh, I'll play on the wing. So we played on the wing against Halifax, scored three tries. I remember this bloke with buck teeth and shoulder pads. And half time comes off, crushes run over him, run through him, and the bloke come up to him and tapped him on the shoulder. The bloke was running against a little winger for Halifax and said, do you not possess a, fu- a fucking sidestep? <laughs> you can beat that out, can't you? <laughs> Said to him as he was walking off, you know. The second he didn't run over. <laughs> he ran over every Brett Kenny played in the wing Brett in, in one of us. Yeah, so like Greg, uh, Greg Alexander played in the wing. That yeah. was the famous um, backflip. That was in France. He was the first bloke to do the forward roll and then the backflip. Oh, really? Yeah, and played in his tracksuit pants. You remember that? <laughs> no, he didn't. He did in France, yeah. Freezing. <laughs> it's cold. You are joking. He did. <laughs> didn't he? Yeah. Take these, take these, like... Hey, the work? Pants, really? Yeah, it worked. Scored a couple. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I'm not. I'm not having that. Yeah. He played in his tracky bottoms. Yeah, for Australia. And did a back flip and a front flip and a whatever else. And everybody else probably looked on in envy, thinking he was yeah. smarter than that because it was. I was lucky to do a forward roll. Can't James. Over that. But it, I, again, like just just to to our listeners, it, it's so hard to comprehend that within that two weeks of a test match. I think maybe one run out. But having There's three, three games in three between, games in between yeah. but that's but you've, got, so, you've got twenty eight players, and you've got so and blokes th- that well, play in multiple positions too. But again, th- th- you've got twenty eight players on tour. Thirteen out thirteen is twenty six. There's two reserves on it. Like there's not much room for error. There's not much room for injury. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, like a front row there now, getting into the maths and the yeah. Oh, I learned out of that. <laughs> But, um, it, it, like I reckon basically mod, everybody modern, was playing one ga- on average a game a week. But on I, average, we again we be, we become we, we get accustomed to, to situations, and now the modern day player is accustomed to you know a five day turn round being almost uh, well the, compulsory. The tr- well, the five day yeah. turn round in the modern day era is it is seen as a huge disadvantage. And, you know, the RLPA and the NRL work to minimise the amount of five-day turnarounds because it's seen as such a disadvantage and, and play welfare and all that. But now now the modern-day player has become familiar with that. It's almost as if you go, oh, if you wanted a three-day turnaround, even coming off the bench for oh, the EMUs, you'd be like, that? Yeah. how am I going to do that? But mm. was it just so familiar and just the standard, the dumb thing for you that you didn't even think about it? Just well, play. I, I remember playing in Australia and it played a... Played a test match during the week and played from a club. The you know, no, you, you, you just, I remember just, playing at you just Origins. Just playing. the norm. Yeah, absolutely. I remember playing Origins and playing in in Queensland and then playing in the Amco Cup or whatever Panasonic Cup mm. the next day, the next night. <laughs> yeah. And you thought you, you thought if your mates backed up and all that, you thought you were weak if you didn't back up the next day. If you had a choice, you played. Yeah, yeah. There's no, no doubt about that. If any time. You'd, you know, you'd rather, and you know, training was a bit different too. Training going into a game, you weren't training as hard as what the other blokes were who had that game off. You know, and they were getting flogged somewhere, and so oh, it was an upside to it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I'd rather play, play the train. Play the train, oh, absolutely. I'm with you. 
And on those kind of things, you want you just want to play. You want to play as as as, as much as you can. And and I'm sure that the coaching staff, they, it, it wouldn't have been easy to make sure that. They were giving everybody, you know, as much footy as as they could um, within the way that they wanted to approach games and who and when they wanted to use them. Just quickly, if you know, say for instance, I'm um, going through those games. You play, um, you play Great Britain uh, on. I'm assuming the Saturday, but then there's another another game in Halifax, St Helens, Oldham. Would would the whole squad go to those games? Yes. Oh yeah, like absolutely. every, every it, it would be. We're all in this all together. The There's absolutely. no, oh, I, play, I played two no, days no. ago. I'm just going to That's stay how I made hotel. me 40 quid the games I was playing in. <clears throat> I'd hire out my jacket. <laughs> Big woolen jacket. <laughs> Beautiful. So you'd play. Yeah, but, mate, there was a line-up to take. Yeah. If I was playing, I wouldn't have the jacket, but I'd no, that was understood. Mm. You'd, 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 no, yeah, it, it, I, I, everybody <laughs> that. And, and, everybody and went everyone to, wanted every, that. Everyone wanted to go. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, you feel bad if you missed. Yeah, like, no. yeah you had to go. You had yeah. to go to the game. Yeah. I, 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 I think I, I like that. I assume that's what you would say, Yeah, that you would all go to the game. And the yeah. other thing too, James, in the dressing room, like we didn't have a lot of strappers and all that. It wasn't the staff that you got now. Yeah. Well, you'd have the coach and the doctor and that would be it. Like the blokes would get around helping each other, you know, taping each other up or their ankles or their or whatever, wouldn't they? And I'm pretty certain time, you know? that if you weren't playing and you went to midweek games, that you, you went kitted up, kitted up, yeah, like you in, kids, in a yeah. suit, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, unless you're a duty <clears> boy, <throat> yeah, you'd be in tra- your in your kit in your suit. granny old tracksuit there. Yeah. But every time you went out into the public like that, it was tie, yeah, suit. You dress, you you dress the yeah. part. Yeah, you 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 dressed like you were representing your country. Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. That I think that. Um, I think even now, the club games, I think it's important that teams turn up looking professional and dressed in club gear. Mm. I, I think it's, mm. I think it makes you feel really good going to a game knowing that you're representing that and that you, you look the way that you should look to mm. represent something so dear to your heart. Yeah, uh, especially with... You know that 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 green blazer. Yeah, like I don't it, think it, players it, it should turn up at games in tracksuits and mm. stuff like that. I think it's important that, as I say, you, you're representing something much much bigger, and mm. and that it almost speaks to the pride. soul, doesn't it? Yeah, like it's mm. a it's, a special, nice, yeah. it's a special special time, isn't it? Then we had the Akubra hats and all that sort of stuff too. So the blokes would wear their mm. Akubras and. Something yeah. special, and so, that's why I turned up today. In <coughs> yeah, in your, yeah. <laughs> you turn it on and turn it off, right? You, yeah. um, you win the second test, Ashes sewn up. Um, any extra parties or or or, or a, a big a sense of achievement, like, or is it just well, we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing? Oh, no, we, we enjoyed it, and knowing that you'd won the Ashes, or you'd you'd achieve that, but now. The new goal is let's go through, mm. let's go through. Not was that beat. was that the immediate talk straight away? Stella for you as one of the leaders amongst the group, or no? It was to it, it was to enjoy. Yeah, it was to like, yeah, it, enjoy. It's just <coughs> and again, the enjoyment out of beating Halifax and Oldham was 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 wonderful. Like we just, it's another step. Um, we celebrated well, mm. like but there weren't degrees necessarily of celebration. Yeah, you know? it was just. It was Every just, night was a big, it was, yeah, the same. Not, it was as big as, as you, you wanted it to be. Like some were more celebratory than, than, than others. others the way that, you know, I, I wasn't a big drinker but I, you know, I imbibed and, and had, a, had a great time. But, yeah, maybe after test matches you know, probably a little bit um, the high was Yeah, was, 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 that, more. F- was there that feeling after you've won the second of like, yeah, to win this, we've, to win we've it. done it here, yeah. like to win the Ashes. Yeah. But I think, I think more, like Steve was saying, I think it was more looking forward at what's to come. Mm. That you know, then the that's when the big celebration will be when we get to the end of it all. When we won all three Test matches and we get through undefeated, in the back of our minds, that's that's the job. That's yeah. when yeah, it's that's all job, that's yeah. the job. But all all done. Yeah. Bit of little elbow knock. I did. I should have played. I peeped with Filthy on me, mate. 
No, I dislocated my elbow against uh, St. Helens. Oh, I just thought you'd put it back in and finish the game. But to, yeah, that, I know. that, that, that didn't pretty, happen. Mate, they couldn't put it back in. <laughs> that was the bad thing about it. It was um, it was ugh, wasn't wasn't real good. But it was my own fault. I was trying to snot one of the poms <laughs> blindsided or whatever, and uh, he ducked his head, and I got caught. And it dislocated my elbow. But anyway, they were the rules. But so, the good, good thing about Stephen, he, he <clears throat> Noel Clear broke his arm, and he he that was later in tour. He ended up leaving, but Stephen. Who hurt himself earlier in the tour? There was, never any, there was never any question that, <laughs> that he wasn't going to be there until yeah, the final day. Day. Well, uh, do you, you know what? Like na- nowadays, like the the medical oh, the staff, the, 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 the club, the head, the he- they'd be in a flap. <coughs> like, are we going to get surgery over there? Hmm. Are we going to get him back? Like, it would just be we're going to look after this. Hmm. Was there any? Ever any talk with, with your club back home about right, maybe come over? Well, it was, was dislocated. It was a scratch. Yeah, it was. It was a scratch. It was nothing. You know, we had the Monty Python movie. Yeah, you know, it was I'm nothing. Cut, yeah. Come back, you chicken. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but you missed a fair few few I games. After I missed. That. I missed the third. Te- it's funny. I got a story about that, James. I was talking to you a little bit earlier. We played the third test and Australia won with Wally Lewis scoring that great try. Anyway. The, the sound system after the game had come on. The man of the match is number eight, Steve Roach. I said, <laughs> "Man, how good am I going? I didn't even play." <laughs> hey, Paul Dunn took did, over did, my did place. You, he was a mate, the, good. Did player, you get the man of the match check as well? Because I believe you got. No, I think I think I let Paul collect it. He was the man of the match. Uh, remember, he, remember, he played well, didn't he, Pete? He did. He did. He come in and played well, you know. Mm. But yeah, so. What so then got? I hung around. I, I actually, <laughs> when we were at the France, I actually played again. Oh, you did. You, so you did make it, it back. I did make it back. Yeah. yeah. I had well, to play. I had to play one game. Otherwise, they said, "Why didn't you send him home?" Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, so, what did what did you do then? Fill, fill in your time. Could you could you train or you just in and in and around the the boys? Oh, just become a nuisance, James. <laughs> Just so there wasn't a change at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was business it, it, as usual. It was, it was, it was, it was pest early. In the, in the, pest in, yeah. yeah. In the yeah. sling or? No, no, I never had a sling. I just just cracked on. Just racked her up. Yeah. Wrapped her up and away you go. So you you go on and you, you secure the the ashes um, at, at Wigan. Um, you've you've clean sweeped. You've not lost in England, uh, but the tour isn't over. Um, Hang on. You, or you, you want to third, third t- tough game. Yeah, like we saw, uh, we saw what England were capable. Of. It. I was nervous. We we had a g- pretty good first half. They brought some subtle changes. A bloke called Harry Pinner back, back row. Oh yeah, forward. yeah. Uh, yeah, lock four, really skillful player. Made a bit of, bit of a difference. Joe, uh, early in the second half, they came. Like Joe Lydon scored this great try, out, outpaced Gary Jack to score. Right, Gary right, Schofield right, right. got across yeah. and that. They had the momentum. Yeah. And it was – and, again, I go back to the influence of Wally Lewis. He's the one who got us in a huddle, laid down the law as to what we needed to do and, and you know, get this sorted and, and, and physically – like he, he imparted the knowledge and that the – the motivation, and then physically went it about himself, yeah. d- doing it type thing. Mm-hmm. But they, England, for the really the first time in that series, I was worried. That it, it says a lot that you you put so much effort in and you didn't just crumble and, and fold, um, because it would be the easy decision to do. Like if the, the if well, if no. the English are coming if the English are coming back and you've already secured the series, obviously it meant so much to you to oh, to yeah, fight back and and, and and. Yeah. Hey, like James, I, I only played 18 tests in my career. Um, played 227 first grade games. You don't get to, I only played 13 origins. You, you don't, you've yeah. got to make, take it, you know, yeah. like you don't get, and you don't know if there's a next one coming at all. And for me, I, there weren't too many after that as well. Like, no, you mean, like, mm. they, they're too hard to come by to, you know, not, you, you don't, Walk off. It, you can't have anything left. So even though they yeah. had the momentum, like that was never, you know, it was, it was just well, you know, how do we stop this, and how do we go about it? And Wally led the way, mm. but he had a good cavalry behind him. Too. Yeah, yeah. But it was a good test. Like a, it was a, and um, I don't again. I don't think the scoreline at the end sort of indicated just how tight things 
got, I think it got, I think it might have got back to 12 all early in the second half or something. We got a penalty, got away by two, and found it hard to get away any more than that. And hmm. it was. Um, then Wally scored that, like 10 blokes trying to tackle him, one of those. A couple of dummies. And, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Mm. It's a good way to finish. You know, it was a really good, good hard way to finish a test series, you know, to have, to have that challenge put in front of you and to be able to, to overcome it. And, yeah. And, um, you know, and we've been over there a few months by then and so you, you know, maybe some, some thoughts at home and that as well, but we also knew that we had the French League coming out and that, so yeah, mm. maybe not as fresh as you are when you first arrive. And, and then I was singing to Singapore. We stayed in Singapore on the way home. Remember that, Pete? I didn't. Did you, no, I didn't did you go. go I stayed in England. <coughs> Went yeah. to Singapore on the way home. Well, I was going to say, before <laughs> we get to Singapore, like the tour's not over after you wrap up France. the... I loved France. Like three three weeks, seven games in France. Is it hol- Is it a, a bit more holiday mode? Like the, I know you said about Greg Alexander wearing his trackies to play, but it, it is a generally warmer. It, it in, was, in it was a lot more holiday mode. Yeah. It yeah. was freezing. Everybody <laughs> relaxed. No, mate, no, it wasn't. We had some warm days. Still wanted to win, but. Yeah. Still wanted to win. Yeah. But it was a, a, but, a very more relaxed vibe. Yeah, yeah. It was much more holiday mode and, um, you know, the opposition was minimal type thing. Mm. You know, there were some good players there, but no, you, you, there was never any doubt that we, we, we were never going to lose the game there. Although if you go back through history and you have a look, there are some some – Great Australian sides that did go to France. Think about in '78 in uh, France. I think so, and on the back on the back of a sort of a 21-2 penalty count type yeah. thing. Yeah. So that was yeah. that was the concern. <laughs> that was a challenge that you weren't <laughs> going to get penalised out of out of the game. Home field advantage. Yeah, very at much. Its finest, there. yes. Um, but I'm a bit of a francophile. I, I like all things French, and I had a great time there. Just relaxed. Mm. You know, just a few vinos. Did you yeah. did you did you bring the the, beer, the beers and the cigarettes with I'd, you to France? Or oh yeah, you, yeah. They were oh all... yeah, mate. They were on for the whole tour. Mm. <laughs> You'd not run out by then. No, no. They'd send more over, pallets of it. <laughs> we, were, we were a good advertisement. I'd like to think. <laughs> yes. So in France, um, eighty six. Any language barriers? How, oh, I know. How, how are the how are the Aussie boys getting around? Oh, it was in... great. I knew jambon, which was a ham sandwich. <laughs> ja- That's mm. all I knew. <laughs> Got jambon? Through. No, jambon. <laughs> <laughs> I threw a few of them. Uh, je ne parle pas français. Je suis Australien. Je m'appelle Peter. Yeah. I can't speak French. I'm Australian. My name's Peter. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Away you go. The, was, the, was there a little phrase books being passed around? <laughs> or? No, we didn't give him no. rat. No. no. You just... Beer, just, just jambon. Hang around, just hang around with our mates. It was good. That's Pete, you know, as Pete was saying. It was just just all great blokes getting on, having a having a fun time. It was it was kind of the after a after the English part of the, the tour, it, it was, was a bit of a, bit it was of a it was the yeah, let down. The relax the let yeah. down, let's you know we'll win let's these enjoy games. It, yeah. Don't be too mm. undisciplined. Yeah. Because the only problem is the referee's whistle. You know, these these guys are gonna do their best, but they can't yeah. Beat us. So we can't we don't want to blow anything now. Don't don't do anything silly because we don't want bad press. We don't want what we've achieved on the tour to be brought down by Yeah, or overshadowed uh, by ex- yeah. ex- exactly by, you know, any things that you know, m- when you might go s- silly. But no, it, it was it was a nice relaxing time. Did you encounter any uh unfair refereeing? Oh yeah, if you look at the penalty counts, we wouldn't have won one. It wouldn't have gone close. But when we had the ball, you, you can't get penalised when you got the ball. So we just tried to have that as much as possible mm. and score when we when we did. Mm. And I don't know if Julien was refereeing them, but we'd established a nice rapport with <laughs> Julien Raskinier's. I think by that stage. <laughs> I'll tell you what we did do. One of the one of the great. We went. We played. I think in. What I mean, Carcassonne. And ACDC were playing in Carcassonne and we went out to the concert and they learnt that we were um, in, we were in there, attendance. Yeah. Brian Johnson was the lead singer by that stage, obviously, with Bon having passed. And they gave us a shout-out type thing. And then they gave us an invitation to travel back to the hotel in, in, in their tour bus. 
So I got Brian Johnson's pork pie cap, which I've got, got at home somewhere, I think. And I'm thinking sex, drugs and rock and roll. I'm thinking this could be the wildest night of my life. I'm about to go on the tour bus with with Angus and, and – it was the most sedate trip ever. Really? Angus sat down eating um, – uh, baked beans and toast. Wanted to know what was happening back in Burwood in Sydney. M- maybe after they've played, like yeah. they just they want to the relax in that as well. I'm yeah. thinking that this is we're going to be hanging off chandeliers. Yeah. And, you know, like it's there's going to be nudity. There's going to be whatever. You know, no. But still a great night just to be in their company. Yeah. But it was oh, a, that's it, disappointing. Still, it was different. Yeah. It, it was, was a whole crew on but there. It was, it was, was it your whole the whole squad no, on there, uh, or just no. a select few? No, well, not a select. I'm not sure everybody went out there. Not, not everyone went. I, no, I think there might have been yeah, ten or yeah. ten or twelve type thing in that. But um, I went to the Sex Pistols. No, <laughs> 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 but a, a, a good time had in France then. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. some of the guys I think struggled. Fantastic. I think some of the guys were by then. Yeah, yeah. Oh right, um, yeah, yeah. So that is it. so. Again, we talk about how great this tour is, but it is a, lo- a long time it's a long to time. be away. Am I right in thinking that Mal Manning had a, a baby while he was over he there as well? Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember um, the celebration um, in his room. I walked in and he was rooming with Brett Kenny, and they'd got into a wrestle in celebratory mode. <laughs> And Mal Meninga Uh-oh. was throwing Brett Kenny around. You know when that squash ball hits the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, walls? Yeah. And that's that. He was throwing Brett Kenny oh. around and they were laughing their heads off. What a way to welcome your child into yeah. the world, yeah. throwing yeah. your must... teammate against the wall. Jeez, he used to smash the blokes in the little men versus big men, didn't he? <laughs> but that would have been, you know, that would have been difficult for him to yeah. be away. And, yeah. and so, you know, we made sure that we had a good celebration with him. It's like such a... No, tough to be away for one of the birth of your children. Mm. You know? And and the, the, that part of the French, part of the French tour, goes slow, because everyone's you know everyone's going, mate, we can get home, you know, mm. we can get home. Yeah, the end is. But it was good. But yeah, I'm saying you know it sort of dragged on a little bit. Yeah. Well, see, so I was different because yeah. I, I didn't go with the rest of the, t- the team home. Yeah, I went back to England and spent some some long. Period. I got some grace from my club Parramatta, who were very very good. I'd, they realised I'd played a lot of football um, from eighty two through. Obviously, had gone to Hull FC and 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 the seasons they weren't played at the same time. Then, so it was playing footy for years straight mm. type thing. So they allowed me some grace and basically said, "Come back when you're mentally and physically right to go." So I actually headed back to. So the two UK. years later, he turned it back <laughs> up at Parramatta Stadium. <laughs> but I did get the photos <laughs> of of the get together in Singapore. I've got it at home, oh. where it was kind of like a um, you know Christmas time where you get the Santa thing that we have to buy for. Oh yeah, uh, like Secret Santa. Secret Santa. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's called. And 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 you could see it was great. Like looking at the photo, everybody's got their present for many but it was things that had to do with the tour yeah. that other people would look at and not Understand associate type yeah, thing yeah. as when i look at the photo even though i wasn't there you, i knew you why he context, got that and yeah. why i got that and it was it's a great it's a great photo just lying around 20 odd blokes there in disarray with these pre- like goofy eyes coming out <laughs> for, for some, whatever you know, Puck so. teeth. <laughs> yeah, just oh, it's good yeah so, Blocker, you you sneak in a game in France. I did, yeah. Did, did you feel compelled to do that, or, oh, or it was just, yeah. well, or, or you were actually back? Fair? Well, I say I'm, I'm going to be right. I'll be right. I'll, I'll play. I'll play again. Mm. It's only a club game or whatever, but just snuck one in there. Just snuck one in. Otherwise, they would have sent me home. I'll play. I'll play. I'll be right in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, Blocker, talk to us about that. Despite being away for, for so long together. How many days do you stop over in in Singapore? Only only a couple of days we were there. I remember um, uh, they had what, what are those things called? Not tuk tuk with a, the bike with a bloke on the front of it. That yeah, rides. Tuk-tuk. is it tuk tuk? Yeah, me and Big Zero drinking long necks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zero has a monster. This bloke <laughs> pedal harder, mate. Hurry up, you know. Just uh, just you know, just letting loose and having a good time, mate. Having a laugh with all your mates. It was mate? It was the last. It was the last time we were you know going to be all together. Yeah. It was, mate, it was fantastic. Just a just well, I think it was a like a, a day a night and then we went that next afternoon so and that was fantastic. How, how is it when you when you all come together on that kangaroos reunion? Oh, you you become 
that's the thing about kangaroo tours is that you, 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 you people that you play against and you know of, but you you, you become you you understand them intimately more by just you know the, there's some and, and looking twenty eight players on the thing. Um, you spend more time with some than others. Yeah, you're going to be little gangs, yeah. But there was ne- I, I never went away on either two with someone at the end of it I thought, oh, I don't like him. Yeah. Like it's just – but but some you gravitate towards mm. more type thing. And for myself, again, in 82, there was a big representation of Parramatta players. You know, there was, I, you know apart from Brett and myself, there was Ray Price, Eric Gross, Steve Ello, John Muggleton. Even though we won the comp in 86, only Brett and myself from Parramatta made – Made the tour. The yeah. side. Yeah. From so, the premiership when from, inside yes. as well, yeah. Because yeah. Queensland had come into the – That's Yeah, that's, that's they had a, a, a – the, the origin had started and Queensland had a – I don't think they, I think they had, had about 10, yeah, 10 players. players from, yeah, 10 players from Queensland in, yeah. So there, there were more players that I hadn't – but I love – I. you just mm. – Except for Greg Dowling. Rugby league like players, the we're pretty simple, <laughs> pretty simple people, aren't yeah. we, really? Like I don't think we're difficult to get along mm. with. We all have a, a common interest and a common love. Yeah. Um, in our game, I find that if you're a mug, you get weeded out fairly yeah, quickly, 100% and, you, and yeah. you don't get picked in representative sides because that becomes known mm. type thing in that. So I loved every bloke that I went away with. I spent more time with some than others. Some blokes I want, who I did go away with, thinking, "Oh, I wonder what they'll be like." Champions, yeah. you know, and and a real cross section of people, yeah. you know, like. The, the laconic Roy Simmons, Noel Cleal, who've never left the bush. Yeah. They might have lived in the city areas, but they've never left mm. the bush. To, you know, the, the other extreme of you know, outgoing guys who um, just madcap as well, great sense of humours, but with a common love of, of what we were doing and, and I think a love of each other, you know, eventually. Considering everything that you managed to achieve, where, where does this rate? Oh, uh, it's alongside anything. Along, yeah. Uh, it, again, get asked that a fair bit. First time yeah. you put on your Australian jersey, um, first premiership with Parramatta, playing at Wembley. But kangaroo tours. I, again, I, I'll, I'll finish by the way I started. I feel sorry that today's players mm. don't get don't to experience get to what experience. we did yeah. because I can't. We haven't even scratched the surface or gone close in trying to explain how good this is and what it's all about. We've told stories and we've waxed lyrical, but we, we've we've scratched the surface yeah. in, in what it means to us. What, what about you, Bocker? Where, where's it rating? Oh, number one. For me, I never got the winner comp. We played in two grand finals and lost both. But the the kangaroo, you know, as I mentioned, you know, when you know, when you're a kid, that's all you want to do: get that Australian jumper and do a tour of England, mate. For me. For me, number one, and as Pete said, like as far as mates go, like it's you know it's like you like you saw him yesterday. You know, I haven't seen Pete for a few years, but you know it's like we saw each other yesterday. You know, so you build that uh, that bond. You know what you've gone through together for those three months, and you know it's just a, it's a bond that you you know as he said you can't explain it. Yeah, it's I, there. You know what I mean? I think it's it's unfortunate. Like I and I really do appreciate you um, sharing your memories. But I think it. One of my takeaways from this is just how unfortunate it is that the modern day player doesn't get to experience this. Like, well, let's it, get it, it happening. It it it, it sounds I'm, magical. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I agree with you. I I, I think it's done. I, yeah. I don't with the way that it's the game's really, evolved, and I just don't see how it can um, ever come back. No. Mm. And they play in the same time of year now, don't they? Yeah, exactly. You know? so There's that, a, a, a lot, do, lot of difference. Yeah. yeah. I, I think little did we know. That in '86, that there'd only be two more of these type yeah. of tours to come. I thought that they'd be around forever. Yeah, mm. like it would be a mainstay of our sport, but yeah, yeah. It, sport changes, and uh, who and, knows? And obviously, the players these days, uh, James. You know, they they look at, you know, they've got you know test matches and Australian jerseys and that to earn, and and they feel about that the same way we feel about it. Also, it's just different the just, way that yeah. it's it's put together now. As Steve says, the seasons are. A different type thing. It's just, it's in its place now, and it's and it's looked back on the way that it should be looked back on. But there's, you know, there's a lot of motivation for the guys these days as to what's available for them when it comes to you know, representing at that level. I, I think as well, like, you know, 
finances play a part in, and play a part in motivation. But like speaking to you guys, you were, you were doing this for free. You're doing no, this for like it was I just did. that it was just that feeling mm. that that piece you of material that, you can't buy you that can't buy you can't and it, yeah. you know I it, wouldn't it, have cared how much it would have cost yeah. me I'd have paid to yeah. go on it yeah it's pretty magical to allow them to for me to go yeah. oh, how much do you want yeah um just finally to to, to wrap this up I, I'd just like you both um to give us your your, your favorite teammate um that can be somebody that performed on the field, off the field, the combination of both. Present uh, company accepted. Yeah. yeah. Just, just one. Ju- just one. Well, that, you know, if you want to dive into a couple, Blocker, I'll, I'll, I'll let you do that. I'm, I'm not about putting rules. Oh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do just one. But the, the, the relationship that I, uh, that I got with Roy Simmons over the years, just, um, just a, mate, just a great bloke on and off the field, magnificent competitor, Probably didn't have the uh, the ability of, of a Benny Elias, I would say, yeah. and he probably wouldn't mind me saying that. But just as a whole-hearted bloke on and off the field, you know, I'd 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 probably say I'd probably say Royce would be the black guy that I enjoyed the most. Mm-hmm. I hope he never gets to hear this. I oh, really do. Little, yeah, it'll be too big <laughs> because to I it. he's my choice. Yeah. Oh, really, well, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I think in that. I think I spent more time with him than anybody else, and that's probably a sign of, of, you know, the, the, the relationship, how much you're enjoying it. Yeah, and I just, and today, you know, I, I love catching up. I'm worried because every time I see him, the eyes the are eyes just the, the slits. <laughs> they're like Venetian blinds. They just keep getting <laughs> let down type thing. Eventually you won't be able to see anything. But and I, and I think we established a really nice relationship during the origin period mm. in those three games. Um, yeah. And to carry that into the and Pete, the other thing the about him too, tour. the other thing about him too, he was exactly the same with Pete and I as he was with everyone. Mm. Do you understand? I don't know. He just I had do, this, I do know exactly had this what you're gravitation saying. Gravitation towards him, you know. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's yeah. just the way he was. Just, mm. just a fun bloke. Just great to be around, you know. Mm. When it came to the um, the Giants versus the Lilliputians, yeah, he wasn't much help there, but. <laughs> His mobility, you know, he just, he got crushed. <laughs> I tried to help him out. <laughs> well, you know what, hearing you talk about that, I guess what what is very special about this is there was no camera phones, but if there's a moment I would like to see on camera phone, it's, or video footage of, it would be the, the, the little land of the Giants thing, yeah. taking on the, the yeah. small guys outside some country pub in, uh, in the north of England. I think that would be sensational viewing. You'd be viral on all know. social media hey, James, channels. James, you've got connections. Be... How about we reenact it? Uh, we'll go over to England or France and go to well, the forest. If and... we can get a sponsor to fund that, I reckon I think I, there's, I, a, there's, I reckon there's a show in, in that. There's I'm a movie in, in it. There's I'm a movie in, in it. There's a show in it. I, I, I can come and be a referee or yeah. something. I don't know. I just want to be a part of that. But, gents, uh, uh, wholeheartedly here, I, I've just I, I can't exp- like this privileged position that I'm in to sit here. I know our viewers and our listeners w- will love hearing this these stories. Thanks, but man. for me to be here it, in between you guys talking about this '86 Kangaroos, I'm an Englishman. Uh, but I love our sport of rugby league, and to hear you two talk about this has been a- a- amazing Thanks, for me. Thanks, it re- it, re- it really, really has, and I'm speaking from the heart here. Yeah. Uh, and I think conversations like that, like this that we've had, um, need to be had more often. And the fact that it's recorded, um, it just helps that legacy live on because, it, you know, mm. uh, f- for our listeners as well, they're hearing it, but I'm looking in your eyes, Stella. I'm looking in your eyes, Blocker, and I can see just it, it, just what this what, what this this meant to you, and, and, the, and the memories and the feelings that it invokes. Thanks, it, it, it's well, incredibly look. special for me to sit here with you two and and talk about it. So I I can't thank you both enough. I, I think Appreciate it still burns as brightly for us forty years down the track yeah. as it ever has. So thank you. Is that forty? It will take me shoes. Get me closer. <laughs> It can, can only count to 21 naked. Well, you keep counting, Blocker. We'll wrap this, wrap this up again. Thank you so much.